Hey everyone, how you doing out there? I'm happy that we are live for another event here on Real Estate Talk with Randy Steadwell. I have here Ron Wall Raven, an um, awesome guy. Um, so, you know, uh, he has about 24 years of experience and uh, we're going to about to talk about most of them, but Again, this is Real Estate Talk with Randy Steadwell. Uh, if you haven't yet, check out the YouTube channel. If you're on the YouTube channel, make sure you hit the subscribe. Uh, if you're on the Facebook group, either go over to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, or stay here, whichever you prefer. Um, and with uh, without any more introduction, here's Ron. Ron, how you doing today? Hey, Randy. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. So really want to say thank you for coming on with us and joining us to um you know with our group our facebook group as well as the youtube channel so kind of wanted to you know you're a, a big player in the metro detroit area for wholesaling and just real estate in general so i wanted to bring you on and and see if i can add some value and you're, you can provide some value for the group and then at the end, we'll see how we can add some value to you. So, okay. All right. Awesome. So, you know, let's kind of get started a little bit. And by the way, anybody that's out there, if you have questions for anybody, um, please do put them in the chat. Um, and then we can uh, go from there. Like we can answer them as we go. And I, you know, and you'll get my perspective as well as Ron's perspective on this. So on any of the questions. All right. So with that being said, um, Ron, tell us, you know, tell us the backstory, the origin story of how, how Ron got into real estate and, and what happened, what got you in there? Well, if we go all the way back to high school, um, which is a long time for me, by the way, I'm 59 years old. I've been around a little bit longer than most in our world. I came straight out of high school and became an auto mechanic. I went to 12 month uh, automotive school in Livonia called MoTeC, which somebody may know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. I went to WyoTech, so it's the yeah. same idea. Chrysler was it was a Chrysler sponsored school at the time. Uh, I was a 12 month. Uh, technical school that you got to basically got a certificate when you were done yeah and you could get get your license from the state of michigan to be an auto mechanic and in those days it wasn't that the license wasn't the license wasn't that prolific you just needed it to work but anyway i came out of there did it in 11 months instead of 12 got out a little bit early i uh then went straight into a car dealer as a mechanic okay i uh, worked there from Worked at a Ford dealer initially, then a, a, a Jeep Renault dealer in Southfield, and then jumped out to Rochester to a brand new Jeep dealer. Worked there for a little while, bumped over to Sterling Heights for a little bit, came back to Rochester, Bill Fox, Jeep in those days. Okay. Uh, and then um, ended up hurting my back. Uh, really bad during while working because we were doing a bunch of there was this one particular air conditioning repair we were doing a lot of and it just took my back out and I uh, woke up one morning couldn't couldn't work I hurt my back and uh, while I was sitting around recouping I went and took the real estate class trying to figure out uh, how to uh, how to make uh, six figures again because I was humping on cars pretty good Right. But when I came out of surgery for my back at that point, the doctor said, hey, you can't do any, you can't work on cars anymore. So I said, oh, shoot, I can't do that anymore. So <laughs> it was that's a your livelihood that you're living. Yeah, it was a good thing. And it was a blessing and a curse all at the same time. I was very good at it. I was making a bunch of cash and just had to kind of quit. So I took the real estate class, uh, which I was always interested in doing anyway. And beginning of 99 i got my license and hooked up with a local broker that was doing foreclosures for banks okay i uh, uh got one account from him 
who uh, who turned out to be AmeriQuest, which is okay. a B and C lender back in the early two thousands, and of course the world was imploding foreclosure wise in the Midwest. Um, so I took that one account, turned it into two, three, four, had three, four hundred uh, sales a year for about ten years had 40 50 listings any given month a team of nine people and then of course 08 and 09 happened and things imploded from the from the the, the bank world in other words they started helping everybody yeah because the government was doing what they were doing and so it kind of took my business model and threw it out the window um i've done hundreds of thousands of values for houses in detroit and the suburbs I sold roughly 3,500 houses out of the city in that 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then about the, about nine and 10, when things, when I was coming out of that, I decided, you know what, I got to do something in real estate. The, and it was using my, uh, using my property management skills in a lot of ways, because that's what we did for banks. We took care of everything. Okay. I, I decided to start wholesaling. Oh. So I took that four or five hundred database of buyers started looking for deals um took me a long time to get the uh get the so, community so real quick before you did that did you even know what wholesaling was like how did you figure out what wholesaling was because not a lot of agents know what wholesaling is it, well in those days it wasn't a big deal to be a wholesaler you know it wasn't a known technique in a sense Mm -hmm. Of course, a grocery store is a wholesaler, right? He buys a loaf of bread, puts it on the shelf, and sells it. For right. He paid, right? So it's not a... The concept of buying low and selling a little bit more is is not new in that sense. Um, but it wasn't a technique that was very well known. Um, okay. There were four or five guys even in Detroit at the time that were... <clears throat> because the REOs were so prolific... You didn't have to, you could snatch those things off the MLS in those days. You didn't need to market and do all the things that we do today. Right. Outbound marketing. You didn't have to do that. And uh, so when I, I just took that prowess and that time and the database of buyers and just turned it into a wholesale list. Now, mm -hmm. at, you know, at the beginning of that, it wasn't that simple of a process, meaning I just didn't think about that overnight and started doing it. <laughs> It right. was more me just understanding contracts and knowing how to maneuver through that. Um, so even then, it was more like a it was more like a listing in a sense. Meaning, I would pull deals off the MLS, send them to local investors, and and then that's kind of how I it kind of developed into the wholesale. When I realized that I can make you know five or ten grand on a house as opposed to making a, a simple commission. Right. Um, you know, in the REO days, if I made $1,800 on a deal, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> so obviously today that's a different, and of course I was selling 300 deals a year at that number because it was listings. It wasn't me looking for the business, right? <clears throat> so it's a lot different. To, it's the wholesaling technique is just different. And of course I developed it my own way of doing it. Um, and uh, got involved with a bunch of masterminds and things like that at a higher level. So then I took that team of eight REO people and it dwindled and built it back up to a team of eight or nine through roughly 14 through 19 was kind of our heyday. Okay. There's the deals, you know, we did 160 deals in 2018, just under 119 and you know so obviously covid comes by in 20 and so forth uh but by the time that covid came i was very good at it all right with a lot of business and had a partner at the time that uh you know we both complimented each other very well he was a marketing kind of guy i'm a dirty down and you know down and dirty deal kind of guy yeah i work with investors as well as i can empathize with a seller in his living room and you know, which kind of goes back to my days as an art as an REO broker. I didn't really have, or even a mechanic, I didn't have to be a sales guy, right? I just had to, I just had to kind of just get the get the assets, and then I, of course, when you start wholesaling, truly, you have to become a sales guy in a lot of ways, right? Right. So 
I've learned how to speak to sellers and learned how to be empathetic and understand the numbers and do the formula and all the stuff that we do. Yeah. I'm very, very, uh, it, it's easy for me to, it comes out of my mouth naturally now. I don't even have to think about it in regards to how to respond to a seller. So you mean you don't just get on the phone and be like, hey, what you want for your house? No, no. You have to have some empathy, right? Yeah. You have to yeah. understand who your audience is, I guess, for lack of a better term. And right. your audience is either a family member with a with a with somebody who was passed, or somebody who hasn't paid their taxes, or their mortgage is upside down, or whatever the stress is. You just have to be able to solve their pain, right? Because that's really what it is. You're just like, hey, uh, I know you're about to go on foreclosure, but uh, <laughs> hey, what what you want, huh? How right. much you want? Yeah. No. Not are you me, are yeah. you looking to maybe sell your house? Okay. Yeah. You know, well, why do you call me? Well, your name's public record. You know, all those things. Exactly. Yeah. I get that a lot is because I, my primary channel is either, either JV or cold calling. Yeah. So I get that a lot. How'd you get my number? Right. <laughs> What's public record? It's public record. So the worst, the worst one is when you get the daughter's cell phone, you know, when yeah. you that are cold call the daughter's cell phone and they're all over you because how did you get my daughter's phone number? Oh, don't you own the phone? Yeah, well, how do I know it's uh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, by the way, do you want to sell your house? Yes. <laughs> Even when they're yelling at you, you before you get off the phone, you ask them, do you want to sell your house? <laughs> right. Or no, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. I, I Everything you get. It, go, we can go on for ages on yes. uh, types of stories. <laughs> sure. For sure. So, so after you figured out like okay you can wholesale these for more than you can sell them for just putting the you know put them on the market how'd you get around the banks saying that you know um because there was a stipulation you can't assign in in, in the um bank's contract they don't want to see that yeah well there's a technique that a couple guys perfected or figured out is you just buy it in the llc and then you you sell the LLC to the other guy. So if you yeah. just, if you buy a bank REO, which there's not very many of those around today, right? Um, but back in the day when there was a lot, and I was on the broker side, that was the way that those guys did that. They just sold the LLC, um, or they just tied it up. You can change the name, which the banks didn't like. You know, at the end of the day, I was always the the buffer. You know, yeah. I would. It's kind of because I really just wanted those guys to talk to me. Yeah. Just tell me what you're doing so that if you if so that we can put this deal together so that you can get a house and I can get paid. Um, Essentially, you wanted to be in the room with them. Correct. You know? Yeah. And it didn't realize until in the beginning it was just okay. How can I get paid? But then after a while, you're like, okay, no, tell me your processes. I want to know what you're doing because I want to do that later on. And there was a lot of people that asked me that question too. Like, well, why don't you invest, Ron? Because if I was selling 300 houses a year listed wise, you know, that's a lot of hard work. Right. To do that many deals, you know, to do 300 wholesale deals, you have to be pretty good at it. And you have a staff, you have a big staff if you're doing 300 wholesale deals. To sell 300 REOs, it wasn't, they, it wasn't as difficult as it would be to sell 300 wholesale deals. Right. So I was, they would always ask me and I would just tell them, well, you know, I came out of being an auto mechanic into real estate and I got bills to pay. I'm yep. just trying to make a living and trying to feed my family. And of course, the, it just as when I hurt my back, that forced me into real estate, the implosion of the REO market forced me into wholesaling. So I, I'm, I'm a, an, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I just go where I can make the cash and I just figure it out. Because even now, with our market changing, it's a lot different again, you know, meaning everybody everybody could just breathe and wholesale a house and, and list it and sell it the last couple of years. Now we're kind of back to some, you actually got to know what you're doing to sell it. You out. actually got to know the numbers. Right, you got to know, yeah. And so. you can't just, uh, you know, throw something against the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like to do that, but I just like, yeah. I just reach my hand out and grab it when it falls off the wall. That's right. what I do. And, you know, I've done it 
of that understanding what the banks are thinking, meaning even from a yeah. list perspective, understanding what an agent's thinking on both ends, right? Because yeah. I buy houses too, and then put them on the MLS and sell them. And a lot of realtors, you know, they don't understand, uh, you know, what that looks like as a, you know, like you just bought that house. The public record says it's John Smith. And I said, well, it, I'm buying it. Well, how much did you pay? Oh, I'm not going to tell you that. And right. I, then they figure it out. And, you know, if I'm selling it for 75 and just paid 50, they will say, well, you can't do that. And I said, well, yeah, I can. And don't you wish you were me? Like, <laughs> like hey, you could do exactly what I'm doing. I don't see the problem. Yeah.